All right, hi guys, Scott again, and welcome back to another video. Now, uh, it's been a while since my last one. I know the last one was uh, the end of the NC500 where I showed that I wrote off my MR2 and that is no more. I will bring out a full video, hopefully in the coming weeks, explaining everything that went on and that in more detail because I know a couple of you have asked for it. So I will give an explanation to that in very well, very shortly hopefully uh, I do apologize I haven't been posting in a while uh, and that's sort of what I'm gonna explain to you today now obviously MR2 is gone so I'm back down to just my focus for now and the bike unfortunately because I did absolutely love that thing but the focus hasn't been doing me too well uh, so I've had a few issues, which is sort of why it's taken me a while to post and actually get back out in it, because I didn't have a car for some good time. It's roundabout. So yeah, like I said, I didn't have a car for a bit. Now, it, it's not anything major and a bit, a bit more dramatic than it needs to be, but it did take a lot longer to sort than it should have. Uh, so I was driving back to work one day and I got all manner of warnings come up on the, uh, well I heard a bang and then got all manner of warnings come up on the uh, dashboard. Now all it, all it was was I think there was like a screw or a nail in my tyre and it flew out and that's what made the bang was it hit a car, uh, hit part of the car somewhere or yeah on its way out of the tyre. So then the tyre instantly deflated while I was on the motorway. Luckily, I was able to pull off quite quickly. I haven't damaged the alloys at all, so I just needed to change the tyre. But being four wheel drive and I haven't changed in my life, I thought, you know what, I'll go and get all four done. So I get back home, all well and good. I book it in for four new tyres, uh, Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's. Uh, about £170 a corner, which wasn't wasn't the best, but I did it on black circles, uh, which is probably my first mistake. Um, so I booked it in through black circles, and uh, yeah, I was like, brilliant, tyres booked, should be done in a couple of days. Uh, I then went to go and take it to the garage, and before taking it to the garage, I thought I'd check just to make sure I had the locking wheel nut. And this is my biggest, not second mistake, is uh, I didn't actually look when I bought the car that the locking wheel nut was with the car. Normally, and I'm pretty sure he said when I got it, locking wheel nuts are in the boot with all the other stuff, uh, or in the glove box. I'm pretty sure he told me the locking wheel nut was there and I just took his word for it. And I never actually looked until I needed it. So, big, big learning point there is never take word for what they tell you. Get eyes on first, because I made the horrible mistake of just listening to him and going, yep, okay, locking me on, it's the boot, that's where it is, and not actually getting eyes on it until I needed it. So, I then had to contact Ford and try and get a new one made but because I had no proof or like, identification number of the lock and wheel nut or the key um, they wouldn't give me a new one so I had to pay £100 for them to take the old lock and wheel nuts off with their master key and then give me a new set with a new key and that took another couple of weeks. Uh, I then had to get the tyres booked in now that I had the lock and wheel nut and I went to go down to the garage and I drove down to the garage and they told me that the tyres hadn't arrived from Black Circle so they couldn't fit them. I then got back on the phone with Black Circles and they told me they had so it was a good few days of phone calls between me, the garage and Black Circles themselves to suss out why I'd been sent away and why they couldn't fit my tyres and then eventually finally I got them in, I got them changed and here we are, well I've done about 500 miles on the new tyres so they are well in and good to use and honestly I thought it gripped well before this car with those new P4S's on 
and the grip is unbelievable. Like it, it blows my mind when I'm going around some of these corners. I I just it shouldn't it shouldn't handle that well, and it's amazing how different and how much like difference good new tyres make on the car. And I can't wait. I really really want to get this car on track this year. So yeah. I haven't been posting because I haven't really had a car to go out in. I need to get out, do some more stuff with it. I've honestly missed driving it. And yeah, it took, with the tyres, the wheel nut and all that, it took about four weeks just to replace one flat tyre because unfortunately, they don't come with a spare anymore cars these days. They come with like glue and a very, well, 12 volt air compressor. 12 volt powered air compressor which is very very low power for what it is so um yeah I, I had to use that in this pub car park I was trying to get it up just to be able to get me home and I put all the glue in and it just about put 20 psi in it like it was so like I've never had to rely on it and I really hope I never have to rely on them again because it didn't work well uh but managed to get it home tires now on and here we go and i am back and ready to bring some more videos so yeah I, i'm sorry i haven't posted in a while it's just that got his grip and i really would love to do some more updates but yeah just didn't have the car there's a few bits i've got to tell you about in future videos and obviously i've had comments on that last nc500 one asking a bit more detail into what happened in it so i'll be bringing that out for you next so if you haven't watched the nt500 trip that i did uh, yeah watch it i'd love to do it again honestly incredible even with writing off the car still love it i'd love to set the focus sometime but who knows see what happens um the only downside to having this back that i am feeling is the cost of petrol at the moment and how much this uses like i think i'm getting about with a quite fair bit of motorway driving i'm getting about 27 mpg which is pretty good you don't buy this car for mpg but range into 150 to 60 a litre just to get the good petrol in feeling it feeling it in the bank account feeling it this month with the tires as well and i've just had to retax it insurance will be coming up and uh i've nearly had the car a year so i will be bringing out uh a video my thoughts on the car after a year whether I, like any regrets or stuff like that so as always thank you for watching uh if you like the video hit the like button if you're not subscribing already please feel free to subscribe and i'll see you all in the next video thanks for watching